guys, how you doing? My name is Shane Blanchard. I am a three-time kidney recipient, and this is my show, Focus on the Warrior, brought to you by Midwest Kidney Warriors, which is my little deal there. So, hey, I just wanted to jump on tonight and talk a little bit about panel reactive antibodies. Um, this was something that uh, I struggled with on finding myself a living donor. So uh, what I wanted to do was talk about that tonight, kind of fill you guys in on this and and what this all means. Um, it can get really confusing. It can get really scientific. I'm not going to get all scientific with this because uh, when I was doing my research and trying to find out about everything, I really had to dumb this down for me to understand. Um, they were using terms and I didn't know what those terms were. So then I had to look up those terms as well. So I did some of that tonight when I go through this with you. And uh, hopefully this will only be maybe a 15 minute show. Um, but I think it's a question that a lot of people struggle with in the transplant community um, that have been transplanted before. Even sometimes women that have been pregnant before um, have had these issues as well when their uh, PRA uh, could be increased or they could have, uh, you know, their HLA, their proteins. I'll kind of get into that. I'm not going to talk a little uh, too much about it, but let me just get into this right now and talk about uh, what uh, what a panel PRA is, um, panel reactive antibody. So uh, it's, it's a term that you're going to hear while you're being evaluated for transplant. So what it means is when you're exposed to foreign tissues, either through a blood transfusion, pregnancy, or a previous transplant, you may develop an antibody uh, to different HLA proteins. So HLA, HLA proteins is the human uh, leukocyte antigen. Um, what it is is a complex of genes on chromosome six in humans, which encode cell surface proteins responsible for the regulation of the immune system. So what that basically means is that this infuses into your cell system, which is what helps you, your immune system fight off um, diseases. So the higher your HLA, the higher you're going to have, uh, your antibodies are going to be and so that means that the higher your HLA, the higher your PRA, the more likely your body is going to attack a kidney or a lung or a heart that gets put into your body. Um, so myself, I was pretty high and I'll get into that uh, here in a little bit. But if you test positive for HLA antibodies, you are considered synthesized. synthesized. I myself was highly synthesized. Um, your PRA percentage will be greater than a zero. And the more HLA antibodies that you have in your blood, the higher the PRA percentage. It's important to test for the presence of these HLA antibodies before your transplant. Um, if you have a high level of HLA antibodies, it's going to be more difficult to find a compatible kidney for you. However, there are new uh, procedures out there um, that can help such as like plasmapheresis may be able to reduce the antibodies in your blood. And HLA antibodies can vary over time, and so can your PRA percentage. Uh, that can also change over time. So let me get into my experience with this. Uh, my PRA was 99.27. So I was way the heck up there. My likelihood of finding a kidney donor was like one out of a thousand. Finding a living kidney donor as many of you know that are waiting on a transplant, if somebody's gonna be a living donor, they want somebody that's gonna be very, very healthy. It's really hard to find somebody that has a PRA above 90 that's really healthy because those people may have had blood transfusions, uh, they may have had difficulty with pregnancy, or they may have had uh, some tissue donations, some butt, blood marrow work done, anything like that whatsoever. You're typically not gonna get a living donor if um, your PI, PRA is, is over 90. It's, it's possible, but it's not impossible. It has happened, um, and it's rare. Uh, myself, uh, I got a kidney uh, because my cousin donated on my behalf and gave me a voucher, which took me to the top of the list. And I got a kidney from a pretty healthy guy, but uh, he, he must have had some blood transfusions or something. I don't know his history, but somehow we matched up. And I got a very, very good kidney. I was very, very lucky, very blessed. But um, just know that getting your PRA checked at transplant is always going to happen. 
And it's something you want to find out about and always ask because, you know, if, if you're under, you know, 20, 30, something like that, you're not going to have an issue. But it's still important to know um, because, you know, most people that's had blood transfusions, pregnancies or um, transplants can have a high PRA. And then vice versa. I've seen some people that's been pregnant and, and had, high, had a transplant where they didn't have a high PRA. Uh, I had my first transplant when I was 22 years old in 1997, and I got that from my brother. And then when my best friend donated to me in 2019, uh, our antibodies matched up. I was under 30. He was under 30. So um, we were right about the same within five points of each other. Don't know how that happened because uh, my donor, Brad's never had a surgery, never had any type of procedure done, but uh, we still matched up. So it was pretty cool. Um, but again, I ended up getting seven blood transfusions after that transplant, and uh, that just bumped me way the heck up there on the number. So um, another thing I'll talk about is, is is how you get the antibodies, which I've hit on a little bit, but let me get this a little deeper here. Um, Anti-HLA antibodies are formed by the immune system when you are exposed to proteins that appear similar to tissue types. This most commonly occurs in the setting of previous transplantation pregnancy or blood transfusions. Occasionally, the cause of anti-HLA antibody formation is not known. Unfortunately, once you have anti-HLA antibodies, they do not go away on their own. Antibodies can be difficult to remove from the body, although different treatments have been tried. Antibodies level, antibody levels can temporarily increase in the setting of an infection, vaccination, or transplantation. So anti-HLA antibodies, let me talk about that because it's a different word than what I use, but those are formed by the immune system when you're exposed to proteins that appear similar to tissue types. So um, I think I already said this. Yeah, this is most commonly occurs in the setting of previous transplantation. So um, I just wanted to kind of hit that again, but that's what the anti-HLA does is um, it's it's most commonly occurs with people that's had like i said transplant pregnancy and then blood transfusions so um what are your options if you have a high pra well although it can take longer to get a transplant if you have high levels of um, antibodies you do not need to lose hope there are many options that's available for patients with high levels of antibodies if you do have high antibodies you can seek out a specialized transplant center to expose these options. Uh, so a positive cross match and, and what's a positive cross match? So the cross match test is a very important part of the living donor workup and is repeated again just before the transplant surgery. What happens is that blood from the donor and the recipient are mixed together. If the recipient cells attack and kill the donor cells, the cross match is considered positive. In other words, you want the blood to mingle. You don't want it to fight. And so that's what they do for a cross match is they'll put both your blood together and make sure that they mangle and that they don't fight with each other. So positive uh, cross match kidney transplantation. Occasionally, it is possible to undergo positive cross match transplantation. In this case, you have antibodies towards your donor, but it is safe to cautiously undergo transplantation at a specialized transplant center with expertise in this particular area. You may need special treatments such as plasmapheresis or intravenous hemoglobin uh, to undergo this type of transplant. These are treatments that can remove antibodies. In select situations, positive cross-match kidney transplantation is a better option than remaining on the deceased donor waiting list. So let me talk about, uh, first off, plasmapheresis. So plasmapheresis is a type of um, injection that you get. It's an infusion. And what that does, say, if your antibodies, your, your PRA is like, say, 99, um, they'll give you these uh, this plasmapheresis, and that can take out some of those proteins. So you could go from 99 down to 50. You can go from 99 down to 40. Or you could just go down from 99 to 89. The problem with plasmapheresis is they can't guarantee how far you're going to drop. So if you have somebody that wants to donate to you, uh, what they'll do is they'll start the plasmapheresis and and try to get you down to where uh, that donor is. And once you get down to where that donor is, then they can go ahead and do transplant. Now, I had looked at this as an option for me when my cousin was going to donate. But the problem at the time was time constraint. 
And the other problem with plasma phoresis is you don't know the time or how many treatments it's going to take. So it's kind of a new science. So that's why we went ahead and did the living voucher program instead of plasma phoresis for myself. Uh, I know there are people out there that are currently going through plasma phoresis that I'm friends with, and um, they've had some luck where they've went down 40, 50 points, which makes that awesome for them because that means that um, they could virtually get a, a kidney from anybody out there that, that can donate, especially if they can get under that 30 number. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about is the understanding of an anti-HLA donor-specific antibody and positive cross-match kidney transplantation has increased considerably over the last 10 years. More options are now available to patients with high antibodies than ever before. So researchers continue to work hard to overcome the antibody barriers to successful transplantation. If you've ever been told you have antibodies before losing hope that you will never get a transplant, seek consultation with a transplant nephrologist or a surgeon who speci specializes in this area. Now, a lot of hospitals, uh, there's still, there's some hospitals that will do plasma phoresis, there's some that won't. I was at a, at a particular clinic that is about an hour away from me, they don't do any plasma phoresis. And then I ended up going to the University of Iowa City Hospitals, they do do the plasma phoresis. And then there's a hospital in Chicago, Illinois, or Mayo Clinic, and they do plasma phoresis. So if you live close to those, uh, a Mayo, you know, definitely uh, go there and ask your nephrologist for a referral. And that could be an option for you to do some plasma phoresis uh, to get that down. Um, and especially if you want to go on the National Kidney Registry, uh, that's going to help you too. So I hope this... Uh, helps everybody. And if you got questions, please put them in the comments. Um, I know these live videos typically uh, don't take off until after the fact. So I will check back here often and check the comments, see if there's any type of questions. And uh, I'll try to answer those the best I can. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm just a transplant guy um, that just talks from experience. And so that's all I can uh, kind of go with. But uh, if, if you've got anything I can't answer, I will find the person that you can ask and hopefully get the help you need. Um, one thing, guys, if you could, too, when you see this online, uh, please like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do get a number of people that are looking for kidneys that come on my show on Wednesday evenings called Focus on the Warrior, where we share their stories and they need a transplant. So please make sure that you watch that and make sure that when you see this, that you give it to us go viral. So. And they're not necessarily viral, but uh, these don't ever go viral, but at least they get more attention. And hopefully somebody that has a high panel reactive antibody can see this and get some answers because it's, it's new to a lot of people and a lot of people really need some help from it. So make sure that you share this and uh, get this out in the community for other people to see. And again, if you got questions, just leave a comment and ask and uh, I'll try to answer best I can or I'll, I'll find somebody that definitely knows the answer. So. And I thank you guys for watching. I told you this is probably only going to be about a 15, 20 minute deal. It's just short and sweet. Um, but uh, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you comment. Make sure you ask questions. Make sure you share this. Make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So that way we can help people out there that need a kidney transplant. So until then, guys, uh, take care. God bless you. And uh, be blessed.